Hi, my name is Drew from Hudge Media, and I'm going to take you through the steps to create a tunnel, kind of like a fake tunnel with a cool looking texture in Photoshop. I am using CS4, but of course you can use this in uh, many versions past. Um, certainly, I think Photoshop CS and possibly even before. This is a picture of bread, uh, this texture here. I'm going to double click it, and that's going to open that up in Photoshop. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to hit the letter F, which puts me in full screen. And I'm going to, if you don't see your actions menu, we will need that, your actions panel, rather. And that uh, is under your window menu. I'm going to, I have a few sets of actions here. This is the default and image effects and so on. I have, here's my name, Drew. I got a few in there. I'm going to add another one. So before I even do that, I'm going to get rid of this lock. There's some cool tricks. I know you can drag the lock to the trash, but even that, I'm going to, Cintiq, and I don't know. by the time I do that, I just find it so much quicker just to double click and hit enter. Uh, my left hand is always dancing on the keyboard anyway, and my right hand is uh, holding a stylus. So I'm going to uh, duplicate this layer, and let's grab the uh, the quick select W. We'll take it, the quick selection tool, and I'm just going to use the settings that are there and drag this tool on the outskirts of this texture. What's cool is I don't even have to hold down shift to add to my selection because that's the nature of the quick selection tool uh, at least by default and then I just hit uh, delete. Now you don't see a difference here because remember I duplicated this layer 0 to be layer 0 copy. If I turn that off you can see my other layer. So that's kind of neat. I'm going to deselect that. Now here's where the actions come in. I'm going to create a new action. I've got my set, my folder selected. It says action one. I'm just going to say add layer. And then I'll say uh, decrease size. So DEC will be fine. Um, or size down. Name it whatever you're comfortable with. Now I'm going to hit command J. That is going to duplicate the layer. You can see it says layer zero copy two over here. I'm going to hit free transform which is command T. I'm going to hold down, uh, grab one of the corners, it doesn't matter which corner you grab, but if you hold down shift and then the option key, I can resize this down and it, shift will constrain my proportions, that's a good thing to know, and the option will keep it centered as I drag. So shift and option, Drag that down. By the way, here's a here's a quick trick. Whenever you're cropping or anytime you see these handles on the box, right now it's a free transform. If you just double click inside of it, you're going to seal the deal and create a copy of that. Okay, that's all I need the actions for. I'm going to go ahead and stop. Now I can come up here to my action I just added. Add layer dash uh, decrease DEC, and I can hit play. I can do that a couple times. You can see I'll do it a few times so you can see what it's doing in the composition. And I'm going to double click on the action. Just this nice neutral part over here will do. And I'll just say uh, let's add F1 and I'll just say Shift and Command just so I know it's not overlapping other keyboard shortcuts I might have. So now I've attached this that easily to a keyboard shortcut. And I'm creating this uh, this shape, this irregular jaggedy shape and it's just going off in the distance or at least it looks like that it's really just getting smaller and it's creating this kind of tunnel effect which is kind of neat so all right that looks uh fairly fairly good for what we got i'm going to go back and turn the bottom layer on layer zero um, i will create a curves layer on top make sure you've clicked on the top layer before you click that in your adjustments panel. By the way, if you're if you're on a layer of pixels, this adjustments panel is going to give you options of what would you like to add, a curves layer or a hue saturation. And in this case, uh, I did curves, it just popped it right on top. But when you are on an adjustment layer, this panel updates to show you whatever adjustment layer you are using. So um, I'm going to make one bright and then I'm going to come back down here and do the same thing and hit the curves adjustment layer. I'm going to make one one dark. So this is the one on top. That's bright. Now you can kind of see they're they're reacting to each other because this is a whole stack of layers. This is my dark one. That's my light one. So let's see. I'm going to actually use the masks here. I'm going to paint on the mask. Let's grab my brush. Again, my mask is selected. You can tell by the little uh, 
frame marks that kind of frame it in. And I want to kind of just kind of paint, take a little opacity up on my brush. Here, here's the mask. Okay, so I'm just kind of painting in, making that a little bit darker. Um, let's even make it darker. Let's bring this down. Okay, again, I'm playing with the bottom curves layer. And really, I'm just playing. I mean, I have an idea that I'd like to make this this top part dark. Uh, okay, that'll that'll do for now. Uh, what I also would like to do is um, add a new layer. Now, the shortcut Shift Option Command N for new. I'm going to I could either just add a daub of paint like that, or I can come up here to the Marquee tool and make a selection. I'm going to make my selection even a little bit bigger than than my uh, paint that I've just laid down. And then I can just fill this. If you hit Option, Delete, because this is a foreground color, black, over here you can tell it's a foreground color, Option, Delete will fill that with black. So that's a real easy way. I, I didn't even have to spend the few seconds I spent painting that in. I'm going to deselect that. It looks terrible. It's It's a hard edged circle, but if I go under Fill and hit Blur and Gaussian Blur, you can see that I'm blurring this, and that makes it look a lot better. Um, I'm even going to hit my eraser tool. Yep, that's right. It's very destructive. I'm truly erasing pixels, but I'm going to kind of bring back some of the some of the ones down here. I'm going to use a a different blur tool. I'm actually kind of dobbing, uh, kind of stippling these dots in here. I'm going to go up here. I'll do a little bit on the top just to make it irregular. Okay, now I'll go up under Filter, Blur. Let me do Radial Blur this time. And I have a Zoom Blur selected. Now, I'm going to be a little conservative. I'm going to I'm not going to max it out. I feel like I could, but let me just let me just see what about halfway does. About 56. Okay, not too bad. Now, I can either do it again or since that was the last filter I used, Command F will simply Allow me to do this over and over and over. So I'll do that over and over and over. I got my layer selected. I'm going to paint a few more kind of black daubs of paint or pixels of black. I'll back down on my opacity a little bit and I'll just keep hitting Command F, which will keep that zoom blur. And that way I'm kind of painting in at some, some darkness here over over the what I think should be the darker areas of the tunnel. Okay, so I do that a few times. All right, doesn't look bad. It looks like it surely has some depth to it, and I could sit here and probably play with a little more. I'm going to change the blend mode on this. Now, if I started cycling through my blend modes by holding down Shift and either the plus or minus, that's beside the backspace key, not the numeric keypad, but the plus or minus on the uh, letters portion of your keyboard, if I did that, my brush blend modes start to change. So I always like to hit the letter M. It takes me to my selection tool and then cycle through these blend modes. That's that's kind of cool. That's saturation, by the way, over here. Um, but not what I want. I'm just going to go ahead and hurry up and go down to overlay. I kind of know what I want and I, I can back off on the opacity and there you have it. There's kind of a quick and dirty kind of uh, ca kind of make a cool background. You could imagine some silhouettes in front of this or, um, I don't know, some kind of portrait. All right, signing off. Thanks.